G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, look, um, I've got a pile of pretty well sort of empty sprues here. So I must have got somewhere with this. Yes, there it is. Look at that. It's pretty well assembled. It, it is dry fit because we kind of let go. The doors will fall off and things will happen. But it, it's, it's, um, it's there. I have got that all assembled. Now, it wasn't plain sailing by any means. I mean... The suspension, I'll just have to take off the tonneau. The suspension, which you can see there, is fantastic. You can't see it? Yeah, you, you can't see it. All right. So, there's a whole lot of suspension there. Okay. And of course, you're never going to see it. Doors are falling off. There's lots of things loose still, because this is essentially a dry fit. Because I haven't finished this at all. I've, um, I've got to this stage because I need things to be in pieces to paint. Which will be the subject of another video. But for this video... I'm going to put this little sucker together and I'll show you the pitfalls. I'll cut out all the swearing, but I'll also give you solutions to problems. And one of the solutions is throw away the instructions. They're rubbish. I'll show you the order that I've built it in and it works so much better. Does that sound interesting? I hope so. Okay, roll the music. All right. Let's build this thing. Now, step one is basically putting the rims into the tires. Now, I didn't do that. Well, I did sort of. What I did was I used some micro liquidate and I used that to assemble basically this onto actually what is the back part over here. All right. And by doing that, it means I can disassemble this all later and I can paint the tires separately, which is what I really, you know, what I want to do is be able to paint the hubs one colour and the tyres another colour. So that allowed for that painting later on. Now, this section here is a nightmare. It really is. Now, if you have a look at this diagram, right? If you have a look at this diagram, that is the top. And that is the bottom. That is the wheel side. And that is the body side. Okay. Here's what you're building. Just above here. Well, there's your wheel side. There's your body side. So that's flipped around 180 degrees. But not only that, when you're actually assembling here, you're completely upside down to what is here. So it gets very confusing. What you're building here, right, that shape, that's not the same as that. And the same problem occurs down the bottom here. You just, it's getting lost all the time. Here, here's your wheel side, there's your body side, okay. These pieces here are going to the top, those pieces are going to the bottom. And again, this is flipping 180 degrees. Now that I've shown you, it's obvious, and you're thinking, oh, what's the big deal, Harry? But when you're actually trying to build the thing, and the first time you're doing this, and it's just all, you know, bits of, bits of plastic, and you know, it's just all confumbling, uh, that is really confusing, because you're looking at this thinking, well, how does that fit on there, and what the heck's going on? And I have to refer to photographs of the model and try and sort of figure things out. So, yeah, once you've done it, it makes sense and obviously with these guys who did the instructions they sort of went oh, well that's obvious i know that goes there and probably their test builders already were over the whole thing and maybe they'd already tried to do it but yes you can build it that way no don't build it that way one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to be putting any wishbones one at the beginning and one at the end it doesn't work the whole thing falls apart that's stupid what you want to do is leave your wishbones and put them both in at the same time makes a lot more sense and then put your axle in as well okay and then leave your wheel off, which is what I've done, which is only really attached from there to the um, to the basically the hub there by the liquid tape, so I can remove that later. So after all the joy of the front suspension, which um, yeah, it um, over fiddly, really, totally over fiddly. Now we're on the rear suspension. Of course, that should be easier because, um, well, you know, you won't have any CV joints and things like that because it's four-wheel drive. It's just going to be a straight, you know, axle. And uh, No, 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 no. We need all of these bits so you can create that. What, you can't see the suspension? No, you effing can't. No, you effing can't. Sure, if you pull it off, you might just see something. It's all there, right? This stuff, which is the most complicated, never gets seen. 
never gets seen. In fact, this time when I build it, I'm leaving all these linkages and all this rubbish until the end. And I might even leave the springs until after I put the wishbones in. Because it is too hard. Well, at least for old fat fingers like mine, it's just too hard. So let's try and make one of these. And with a bit of luck, with the experience I've gained and all the cursing I've made, I could do it a lot faster. So these are all the bits we need. We start with the wheel, as I said, when we use um, micro liquid tape on there, which just allows me to detach the tires later. Down, so I can pull the hubs off. And there's the axle. And here's a tiny little part we'll be doing later. Those two things they say do at the beginning. No, I put them together, but I put them aside. Now we're building the little sort of casing arrangement here, and it's best to put that on first. Don't do it the way they've said. Ignore those instructions. Put the wishbones in first, okay? So once you've got the little case made, now put your wishbones in, which is completely different to how they've got it. So I put in, I think it's the lower wishbone first than the other one. Doesn't really matter. Just get your wishbones in. Once they're in, then you can add these little top pieces, which are the limiters that stop the springs from crazy, you know, jumping away or hold the springs in. Right? They're springy, stoppy things, okay? So they go in, and it's best to put them in now too, which is completely different than the instructions. Now it makes your life easier. These springs can go in there and you can rotate them and position them just how you want. It's so much easier and it's so much less frustrating. Do you know their way it was too hard? This little top piece that goes on there, that's fairly easy. And now I put in the axle and that has the um, the bit that uh, connects to the tyre. See, there's one I made before and it just clicks on. It'll hold and you can remove it afterwards. It's sort of a contact adhesive with that stuff. It's really good. But it allows you to remove, put together, remove, put together. Hours of fun for all the family. So there you go. That's all made. Now I put this fiddly, stupid little thing in that they wanted you to do at the start at the end. Because if you do it at the start, you'll be knocking it off all the way through, as I did. So there it is. In it goes. And one very last piece, which is so much easier if you've got everything together, is you've got this tiny little bracing rod here. And that can go in just like that. Right. It's actually a lot easier when you've got everything together and you can hold it there with some tweezers. There you go. suspension all complete and you can only just see I mean so much of it's hidden it is such a disappointment you build it all and you know you're just never going to see it. it it's in there honestly I 3d put together exactly those same parts and print it out as one thing whack it on I might even do that one day save a lot of people some headaches so it's done and the little props on the back that's made all interesting now we're moving into the interior you know, literally so we're going to be building all of this. Now it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Do you start pulling out some of the parts? Can you see this? That is not a bit of sprue that I just cut off like a nub. That is a part! It is absurd! And it goes into... i get all this out without knocking it flying. That goes into the end of there, right? So that goes into there. Yeah! You could have just moulded it, for God's sake! Really? Really? You're masturbating. It's bullshit. Okay, let's get on with the assembly of this one. All right, let's do this stupid thing. A bit of glue on there with a bit of cat's hair. And here's this impossibly small part. I can't see it. I'm not going to tweezer it because I've lost things to the carpet monster already. And fiddle, uh, yeah, sort of maybe fit. Oh, look, it's in. Who cares? Done. 
Now, I really look forward to doing this interior, but again, these absolutely ridiculously small parts that could have been molded on. They, those, you know, just mounting brackets for the, um, you know, the interior sort of parts for the transmission area. They really could have been molded on. There's no need. And there's about six of the stupid things to do. And then you've got, um, basically, that's the clutch, I think, there. And then you've got the gearbox. And that's not too bad. Those parts are good. They fit kind of well. Kind of happy at this point. And then that's the, um, going back to the shaft for the back the back wheels uh, we've got some thing this is the brake actually yeah the brake lever lonely over on the side there talk about that later and this is a little I don't know some little switchy levery thing not quite sure what that one does the wooden parts which I'm going to just dry fit I'm not going to glue those in they will be dry fit we will sort those out later now gear shift yep that goes in nicely not a problem there and this is a I think it's probably a yeah. There could be levers for like turning on the, um, the, the the spinny thing at the back. Seats, you have to make four of them. They uh, come in two parts. You just basically can glue them to the outside with your tamia thin. And then they just rest straight in there and we're done. Something to watch out for with just about all the little parts is um, the tab points are not always in the positions that I would assume that you know you'd have them. Um, this is the ones you're going to remove, right? So the sprue points. But there are tabs like there which you're going to have to keep. So what I found is as soon as you remove the part from the sprue, trim it and tidy it up because you'll remember where your joins were because I've actually cut off a few of the um, little tabs that are required thinking, oh, it's just a bit of sprue needs removing and then, oh dear, we had to put the part together and I've totally removed the tab. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really fiddly stuff in this kit. There really is. I don't know why. And there's some really screwy bloody um, sprue points that you think, you know, just about everything that's cylindrical has got bang, you know, a join right on the curve, which is always really hard to deal with. I mean, if they do it on the ends, you can often just cut them straight, even just cut them off, you know, with your clippers and you're done. But no, they put them all the way along. So you've got to get in there and try and cut the fine part of it. Ah. To say this kit is fiddly and frustrating is an understatement. Here's another example of mind-bogglingly absurd construction. This back piece here, right? Now it's got no locating points at all. It fits flush. So I've had to, I've used Revel Contactor so that I can keep moving it about because the only way it locates is by a little tab here for this little part and then it sort of pushes into a slot there. Vague as all fuckery. Sorry, not it's just really pathetic construction and you know organization. Because you're really just guessing. And then this is going to have to fit in the cabin, which is no doubt are going to have tight torrances. And you don't want any gap at the top there. So you know, it's a critical part. It's badly designed. Hmm, not very good. Well I was concerned about that fit problem, but it's really not an issue because it's going to be hidden underneath the soft top. A little tarp there of the soft top, right? So the tonia. So it is quite a bit of a gap and it doesn't really, I can't see how we would tighten that up. And I don't think it really matters. So I've just um, dry fit these parts, to see how things would go. Right? Which is often a good technique in that if you sort of, you have something and you're thinking, oh gee, not sure if I've got that quite right or I, I wonder if that's going to fit together with something later. Well, it's a good idea. Check it out now. Have a look. You know, find the parts from later and do a bit of a dry fit as I've done. See, it's all just dry fit. Even the seats and everything. So yeah, that, um, that will fit and that will go together. And yeah, the seats, I know from watching other people's videos, don't glue the seats in because they'll uh, get in the way of actually assembling everything. So the same as I haven't even glued that in because my wood deck are going to come off. So my seats here, they need a bit of sticky because otherwise they fall forward. So they've got some of that. And my uh, wooden decks, they're all loose because I'm going to paint wood effects on those. But I want all um, grey underneath. So this one's a bit fiddly because it gets a bit tangled on the brake lever there. Pretty strange, the brake lever's on one side and then all the other levers are over there or unless is designed that you sit there. Yes, it's probably it's not um, left-hand drive like mine. It's right-hand drive. So yes, being being Australian, I got confused, as as is my want. 
So, um, yeah, he sits there, his brake lever says, stuff's there. Okay, all right, yeah. All righty, well, it seems we can't continue. I was getting worried, I was getting upset, but there's really no need. I'll just relax and put parts in, and we'll see what comes out of the other end. All right, I've had some success. Yes, finally. You may think I'm hating this kit, but no, I'm just finding the instructions incredibly frustrating. I mean, the um, fumbliness and fiddliness of part five, which, um, you know, those tiny little things, which is some of them were absurd, especially in part four, that stupid part for the engine. And then this idiocy, which is just, you know, you've gone to all this trouble to engineer this beautifully. And then this has no real sort of locating on the back of there. But OK, I proved that that would fit better later on. And it's not a real problem. So I got over that. On to part seven. And it was a breeze. Finally. Either I'm starting to understand the insanity of this kit, or I've just got my shit together. Um, the pedals went in, things went on, the binnacle went in, that went in, the steel went in. Everything's ready, I've got all these parts ready to go. Oh, look, it's just a breeze. Yep, so that finally was something that I enjoyed making. And, you know, it had its level of fiddliness, but it was an enjoyable level of fitness. It was something that, you know, I could get my sort of teeth into. So there's pedals on there, there's things on there. It's all very exciting. So, very happy with that. That's ready to go into the body. Alright, so the top of the body. We are ready to do that. And we've cut out some side panels. When I say we, I mean me. There's no one else here. Basicat is not helping. So I've got the um, side panels cut out. Everything's ready to go. I just wanted all the little knobs and things here to set in place. Because when I tried to do a dry fit, I kept knocking my pedals out and everything. So... That's all ready to go. Uh, no decals going on yet because I'm going to basically prime all this grey. That's the trick with this. It's the reason why I have left the wooden bits off, okay? Because they'll get painted separately. But everything that is now grey and everything that I can assemble, I'm going to do now. And I'm, I'm nearly starting to enjoy this kit. Nearly! <laughs> Alright, let's get on with it. Looks like I've finished. Well, no, no, not at all. That's the big stuff, and it's mostly dry fit. There are still so many of these tiny, little, ridiculously small things. I've already lost one to the carpet monster. Here's a uh, little navigation line on that side. Well, the one on that side, when I went to put it in, ding, off it went into a grey carpet. It's a grey piece, and I've looked everywhere. I've found all kinds of things on that carpet, but so far I haven't found that. So. I decided at that point, these things were getting ridiculously small. Oops, dropped the door there. Um, they're just absolutely minuscule, tiny little things, and they're just too fiddly. So for the moment, I'm leaving them off. Whether I'll even use them, I don't know. If they actually serve a purpose or they're, they're visible, yes, I will look at them. The doors went together reasonably well. I mean, there's only a strip to put on there, and there you go. And um, they, they do sort of fit nicely. But what I haven't done is the entire hinging mechanism needs to go into those doors. I mean, these parts, there's no way. I won't be able to see them. There are still so many more ridiculously tiny little things that need to be added. I'm not going to do them at this point. I'm basically just going to paint this. Most of this is dry fit. Now, remember I was worried about this here matching up? Well, it does eventually. Yeah. By the time you put everything in. Now, a strange thing happens. I'll lose the doors. There we go. Suicide doors, if I want. A strange thing happens once you put this whole interior in. 
And the strange thing is it doesn't fucking fit. Yeah, that's the strange thing. So um, let me show you. There's a massive big thing there. And I've tried everything. You can kind of get it. But that's a lot of pressure to do that. So even if I manage to glue that up, that is going to require filler. And people have said this to me that, oh, it's going to need filler. The same on this side. And that was after scraping a lot off the interior parts. The, uh, you know, the bottom of these sort of internal seals. Let me show you. Because this is just all dry fit. Okay, so these things here, you're going to have to sort of fiddle and faff with those to get it all fit. Because even though I clamped everything and, and, you know, tried my best to try and get this dash in, yeah, it's just so tight. The tolerance is incredible. And trying to get these holes to match up with the frame under the... Oh, look. It is absurdly over-engineered. I'm afraid this kit has been quite a disappointment in that it's a fun little subject and it could have been a fun little build, but they went absolutely berserk with making parts that were totally unnecessary. Clear parts, they're not going in at the moment. Obviously not. I'm going to leave all of those off until we really get this thing sorted. And then as far as this goes, yeah. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I was hoping that the, um, the wooden parts there, I could have them off and put them on later. You know, after I've done everything, but there's no way, there's absolutely no way that you can have them in there uh, once you've got the top on, because this would be banging against all those sills, right? So these sills on this thing, right? All of this just bang in the way, so they just can't do it. So that means I'll have to paint each half um, as much as I can. At least I have to paint the interior. So the whole interior will need painting up, and this part of it will need painting up. And then I'll paint my wooden pieces separate because I want them to have wood effects. And it's going to be too hard in there with all the stuff in the way. So, yeah, I mean, this one's, the back piece isn't too bad. That could be put on afterwards, sure. But I might as well do all my wood effects while I'm doing them. And then I'm going to have to try and fit this thing together. Put in my wood, well, put my wood pieces in, fit this together, right, following me. And then um, I'll have to mask the entire interior, almost like a cockpit. When you're doing an aircraft and you don't put the canopy on yet. I'm going to have to mask all that up. So that is the subject for another video. Because this is as far as I can take this thing for the moment. And quite frankly, with all the fiddling and faffing that I did, trying to get the two halves together, I wish I hadn't put the suspension at all. So my advice if you're putting this thing together yourself is don't put the suspension in. Don't do what I've done, glue it in. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it until you have got this all done. Everything's on and make it the absolute last thing that you do. Because I nearly broke some of this while you're trying to faff around and trying to dry fit. And, you know, this because it's, it doesn't go together well. It really doesn't. It's, it's um, oh, liar. <laughs> yeah, well, it went in that time. I'll tell you what, it took a lot of sanding and filing to get it to that point. Anyhow, I am just waffling on about how annoyed I am with this. Look, I will admit a lot of it is old man problems with old man eyes and the fact that I haven't done armour in years. And yeah, all of that does come into play. Sure, I'll admit that. I'll admit that, you know, I'm struggling and they're my problems. But a lot of it is just bad engineering. It really is. It shouldn't be this hard. It's like... They put all these extra parts on just to justify the price. Unnecessary. All right, well, on that note, um, there's buttons down here. Push them if you like. <laughs> There'll be another video where hopefully I get the last of this together, paint it, and it's off my bench because it's just the moment. This kid is annoying me. And um, if you really want to help me out, buy me a curry. I really need a good curry after this, I can tell you. So in the next video, I will do the camo scheme for the outside. That'll be nice. Look forward to doing that. And that should uh, be a fun thing to do. First, of course, I've got to paint everything sort of German grey and do this interior. But oh, and we get the decals in on the dash. That should look nice. There's some things to look forward to. And it is a very nice kit. And it sort of does fit together. But the tolerances, they're too tight for these fumbling old fingers and my poor old bandicoot eyes. So it's essentially a Houdini problem. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>